And it's going to close Steam for us to make sure because it can't do anything with Steam while Steam is open and running. All right. So now that we've clicked on that, now Emudet comes up. Okay, that's fine. We're waiting for Steam ROM Manager, sir. So we're going to go ahead and minimize that while we wait for Steam ROM Manager to come up. Now, at the time of this video, there was sort of a weird glitch with Steam ROM Manager, and we're going to show that glitch off now, and hopefully it's not going to happen to you. So what we may really be interested only in is Emulation Station. We don't necessarily want emulators in every single product that we have ROMs for to be injected. So we may just say, just use Emulation Station DE. I just want that installed. I'll, I'll take care of the rest of if I want to inject something else into Steam. So you'll hit preview and hit parse, and you might get this error. And it, you go back and you select other stuff and it still doesn't work. You continue to get the same bug over and over and over again. Okay, fair enough. So let's fix that problem. Close Steam ROM Manager, reopen Emudec, go to Manage Emulators, go to Steam ROM Manager. And we're going to go ahead and reinstall update. Only take a moment. And then we're going to reset the configuration. Done. Now, before we go back into Steam ROM Manager, it's probably a good time to move some specific files over to our C drive. So I'm going to open up Directory Opus, greatest file manager of all time. Let's go ahead and Zoom me this up so you guys can see a little better. Okay. So I have a, well, let me insert that card again. I must have taken it out between takes. No problem. So I'm going to go ahead and there we go. I'm going to plug my USB drive in that has BIOS files and game files. And we're going to go ahead and move these to our hard drive where emulation station and uh, Steam ROM manager expects to see them. Okay. So if you came to this video saying, oh, I go to all these videos and they won't tell me anything about BIOS files or game files. There's a reason for that. And the reason for that is because technically it's piracy, right? BIOS files are often copy protected. They're, they're encrypted. They are not designed or intended for personal use. Game files are the same way. If you go and grab a game like The Warriors for the PS2 from some website somewhere, how do you not think that you're breaking the law? You know what I'm saying? Now, is Sony coming after you for running PlayStation 1 games like Einhander? Probably not. But it's this is why you're not going to get a lot of support, especially on YouTube, because they will they will strike your account so fast it'll make your head spin and eventually uh, kill your account for talking about things like that. So, uh, by, at the end of this video, though, I will show you some helpful methodologies of maybe finding these things on your own. I'm not going to point you to them, though. One thing I will tell you, though, is if you happen to own an Ambernick or other um, legally gray product you bought off Amazon or AliExpress that has thousands of games and, and whatnot, they have BIOS files already. The Ambernick has two cards. One of them has games on them, and the other one has BIOS files on them. That first card, you could actually grab all of these BIOS files pretty much straight from that Ambernick card, which is exactly where I got mine. So... Yeah, there is that. On the drive that you set up Emudec, there's going to be now an emulation folder. Within there, there's going to be a BIOS and ROMs folder. This is probably making a little more sense to you. Go into BIOS. Go to BIOS files here. We're going to select everything. And we're going to copy them over. So what I'm doing is I'm copying all of my BIOS files from my removable drive, my USB drive, and I'm copying them to the emulation BIOS folder. That was quick. ROM's probably not so quick. So let's see what we got going on here. Now, these folders are important. You can't just copy whatever you want into whatever folder you want and expect it to work right. So um, anything that's arcade related, so any ROMs that you're going to use for Final Burn Neo, for MAME or whatever, I highly recommend you use the arcade folder for those. I've got four games here. I'm going to copy them over. And I've got a video, if you look in the upper right corner here, I've got a video talking about setting up arcade games in emulation station and why you probably want to put them all under arcade gba i bet I, there's a gba folder here as well and there is we're going to copy a couple of games over now you'll notice that my 
MAME ROMs or my arcade ROMs were zipped, but these aren't. Now, that doesn't mean that you couldn't have them zipped to save space. Uh, it depends on the emulator. It depends on the platform, whether or not you can use compression. Usually it's zip, right? If you use RAR or 7Z or whatever it is that you want to use, chances are likely, unless it's zip, it's probably not going to work. There are some exceptions, though, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. So I'm going to get Game Boy Color. Copy those. NES. I'm pretty sure it's just NES here, too. Great. Notice these are zipped. They work fine, though, so no problem there. I think anything that runs under RetroArch, you can use zip files for, which is a lot of it. PS1. Now, PS1 um, starts to... This is one of the ones that sort of leave, leave RetroArch, although RetroArch does have a core for it, uh, and allows you to use something called Duck Station. Um, so let me get the... So this is PSX not PS1 or PS or PlayStation. Sometimes it's just figuring out these damn folders. That's the, the real trick. So this comes in a two-file format, a bin queue, which is very common for CD-ROM disk images. Now, this is going to cause us some hate and discontent later, and you'll understand why soon. However, uh, you can use a format called CHD, which is what I have my PS2 game compressed in. And so this is a PS2 disk image, but it's all it's all in a single file called a CHD. Now on the Steam Deck version of MU Deck, there was a compression tool that would actually walk all of your directories and find all of your uncompressed ISOs and compress them for you. Unfortunately, the Windows version doesn't have that yet. Um, so you'll have to kind of work with that on your own using a third-party tool. Okay. So now all of our ROMs and our BIOS files are copied over. Let's jump into EmuDeck, and I got a neat feature I want to show you here. Again, this is what that $3.50 is costing you. Okay, BIOS Checker. Now, this is great. Check this out. All of the ones that require BIOS files are being checked to see if you have said BIOS files. Now, I'm missing the real Dreamcast BIOS file. I don't know how that happened. I'm also missing anything necessary from Switch, but we're not going to talk about Switch here. Nintendo has a very nasty habit of, of uh, doing terrible things to YouTubers that talk about Switch emulation. And um, you can see that I've got PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Sega CD, Saturn, DS. Everything looks good. Now, obviously, if you don't have them, they're not going to show up. They're going to say that they're missing. Um, and there is a, uh, for systems not listed here, your BIOS files must be placed in this. Don't make subfolders, yada, yada, yada. For Switch, use our pre-created folders. Okay, so it's all here. All right, now it's time to go back to Steam ROM Manager, which should be working now that we did the reset and update. Bug fix to send over to them. There's why there's this banner up in the corner, right? Early. This is an early release, folks. Hopefully by the time you're watching this video, maybe it won't be an early release and you didn't have to pay anything for it and uh, all the bugs are fixed. Parsers. Okay, so what systems do you want to inject into your Steam library? Now, just by nature of, of this, it's not going to insert them. You're going to have an opportunity to see what's possible. So emulation state, usually when I do this, I just toggle all the parsers off and turn on emulation station. That's the only thing I want injected into Steam. I just want an icon to run emulation station and I'll run all of my games from there. But I realize that people want to see those icons for games, you know, from, from the 3DS or something in their Steam library. So we're going to take a look at that, too. So then you hit preview. And it's going to basically say it's going to scan everything. Now, if you've got like 17,000 games, this is going to take a while. So be patient. <laughs> Fortunately, we don't have very many, and that's by design. So we hit parse. And let me open this window up, which is nice because we can do that. So here's everything that it wants to inject into Steam based on what we selected from our parsers. First off, you can see Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, NES, NES, an emulator, another emulator, emulator. You get the idea, right? Now, oh, look at that. There's three copies of Einheinder in here. So remember I told you we were going to run into trouble with this? Here's why. Duck Station, which is an external PlayStation emulator, understands that that's a bin queue and there's only there's only one file necessary. But RetroArch sees both bin and queue as a legitimate file type. 
So, which one's which? Don't know. So, you're going to have to guess on one. And if you didn't get the Q file, it's going to be a problem. So, uh, I guess my point is, is using the CHDs is probably your best bet. All right. So, you can see every... Now, I don't... Can you imagine all of this crap injected into your Steam library? I, I can't. I, I, it, it completely... It completely... Uh, warps my brain to think that we're going to inject all of this stuff that's not Steam games into my Steam library. So what we're going to do is we're going to exclude, and we're going to exclude pretty much everything with the exception of Emulation Station. Oh, by the way, if you don't like this graphic here, there's oftentimes there's arrows you can actually choose which one you do like. Sometimes there's a good solution, and sometimes there's just not. And I'm going to take the Warriors, which is a PS2 game. It's my CHD. And I'm going to go ahead and allow that one to get injected too, just so you guys can see that it works and how it works. Then you're going to click Save to Steam. That's going to actually do the injecting. Doing the batch. Done. Okay, that's it. We could get out of Steam ROM Manager now, and we're ready to go into Steam and see the fruits of our labor. Okay. So now if we go to our library, which mine's very extensive, you can see that it injected everything anyway. So this is another reason I'm not a huge fan of Steam ROM Manager. Even though I excluded a whole bunch of stuff, uh, it injected them anyway. So now I'm going to lose my crap if I have to look at this every single time I go into Steam. So how do you get rid of these? That's a very common question we get on Reddit as well. People who've made the mistake and done that. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of that stuff. Go to Steam ROM Manager again. Once again, it's going to close Steam down, so it'll take a moment. Let's put it this way. I don't trust Steam ROM Manager. I just don't. So we're going to do the same thing we did. We're going to leave them all on. Parse them. And we're just going to, we're going to remove them all from Steam. Okay, so it says it's done adding, removing entries. Is that true? Are they really gone? Let's go find out. That seemed to be pretty quick, didn't it? So let's see if they're actually gone. Okay, they look like they're actually gone. So how do we, how could we have avoided this problem? Well, by not parsing everything. <laughs> All right, so let's go back here. Um, we'll go back. Parsers. I'm going to turn on Emulation Station and I'm going to turn on PlayStation 2. Now I'm going to go again. I've got two items. These actually happen to be the two that I want. I'll choose something that I actually care for. Is there anything good in here? Or is it just the same thing? Ooh, Baseball Furies. Love that. All right. Now I'm going to save those to Steam. Great. Done removing. Done with entries. Perfect. So now, technically speaking, we should be able to close out, go back into Steam. And now we should get just the two we actually asked for. Now, what you're probably saying is, Shane, you just don't know how to use Steam ROM Manager. And that's possibly true. Maybe there is some method to the madness that I missed out on. Truth, though, is, is by the time you figure out that you made a mistake, you've got 17,000 items stuck in your Steam library. <laughs> so we don't want that. Okay, so we take a look in our library, and we now, since, since I had all those other ones collapse, isn't that clever of me? The only ones that you see ex, uh, expanded are the ones that were added new. So here's Emulation Station, and here's the Warriors. Awesome. Okay, great. Well, that seemed easy. So we'll come back and look at the Warriors here in just a minute, but let's go ahead and look at Emulation Station Desktop Edition.